Ready. Fight. Here, ladies and gentlemen, we have one of the great bait and switch techniques of the last couple decades. The true difference between arcade and console gaming, and we didn't even have to get any DDR pads involved. This is the PlayStation version of Marvel vs. Capcom. The original one, no numbers needed. One of history's great mistakes. Now let's get one thing straight. Marvel vs. Capcom was an unbelievable arcade game. The port for the Dreamcast was exceptionally accurate. But the Dreamcast was a 6th gen console. The PlayStation, for all its potential, was a 5th gen system. It just couldn't push the sprites fast enough. It couldn't handle this level of awesome. So because there still had to be a Marvel vs. Capcom on the PlayStation, we got... this. A sad excuse. The first difference you note is that, in the main arcade mode, you're not playing a two-on-two -two match. It's supposed to be a two-on-two -two match, but that would take resources and memory the machine just didn't have. Instead, it plays much more like a regular one-on-one -on -one fighter with an assist character, either one of the playable roster or a dedicated support character. Interestingly enough, after a knockout, the fight continues immediately without refilling the victor's health bar. Very killer instinct and perhaps an attempt to mimic the mechanics of the real game, but it's too little too late. The most damning indictment is the crossover mode, which attempts to mimic the gameplay of the arcade by allowing two separate characters, each with their own health bar. Sounds fantastic! except that the character you choose becomes your opponent's reserve unit, and vice versa. This way, the memory limitation is alleviated by only having two characters, the one you chose and the one chosen for you. It's distressingly fair, but only because it makes every game a mirror match, in a manner of speaking. And if you're using one of the palette-swapped hidden characters, like Red Venom or Gold War Machine or the robotic Chun-Li wannabe Shadow Lady, well, then the whole thing can just quickly become a mess. Like the only hidden character with a unique design is Roll, and the manual input code to use her, start at Zangief, left, left, down, down, right, right, down, down, left, left, up, right, up, up, right, right, to the space off the board adjacent to Mega Man, doesn't even work. It sounds like the arcade, it looks like the arcade, but the most crucial element is missing. It doesn't play like the arcade. And that's unfortunate, because back in the day, this beast was king of the hill. Fortunately, that can't really happen today. These games are designed for the home, and if they eventually find themselves in an arcade, so much the better. Besides, the chances are better that there's a guy you know with a pair of quality arcade sticks than there being a functioning arcade in your town complete with people who aren't just in it for the tickets. I'd say let this be the last misstep for the series, but you're familiar with the whole Ultimate MVC3 debacle. I don't think I have to yammer on about it anymore. You either hate it, or you love it, or you hate it, but you're gonna buy it anyway because Phoenix Wright. That latter option might just be me. That's okay. Cool, cool, cool.